Okay, my name is Jeff Smith with Assurance Financial Home Loans. Uh, before I go into uh, my presentation about myself and our company, I wanted to quickly go through, uh, show you some pictures of what the competition out there looks like. Um, these are the people, if you don't do business with Assurance, you're going to end up dealing with. Bob, if you could. Like, like Bob? Yeah. <laughs> Get the entry key there. So everybody knows this guy right here, right? A uh, horrible person, you know, owned an entire town. Except for one a rascal little fellow. Uh, hit the next one there, Bob. And then, of course, we all know this guy. He was very greedy, good on short-term relationships, not so much on long-term relationships. He liked to use people quickly and then get rid of them. Bob. Okay. This guy, uh, despicable fellow. Uh, oh, is this Dr. Evil we skipped yeah. ahead to? Okay, I missed the... Uh, okay. So, anyway, we all know him. He tried to rule the world. So, Bob, if you go to the next one. Okay. This guy actually, uh, back to reality here, um, this fellow actually was CEO of Countrywide Home Loans. Uh, they developed a practice of, uh, <laughs> Bob, I hope I'm not stepping on toes here. But, no, not at all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they developed a practice of uh, ignoring every red flag uh, that comes across a loan. They approved a lot of high, very high-risk loans. What's worse, he then packaged those loans, sold them to investors across the entire country as low-risk loans. Once all those loans started defaulting, all these investors were left holding the bag. Five years later, we are finally pulling out of the worst financial crisis uh, since the Great Depression. He wasn't the only one, uh, of course, but uh, anyway, if you go to the next one, Bob. So Assurance Financial, um, I'd like to start a little bit telling you, telling you about my personal history. A lot of you have heard the Assurance Financial speech. Um, I've been in this industry since uh, 2000, really. Uh, I was in the construction side of it. Long story, very short. Worked very hard for six years to develop a strong construction industry. We were building houses in 2007. Uh, G. Smith and Company was also doing remodeling jobs off Morningside Drive. Times were pretty good. And then in 2008, literally in about six months, uh, literally really it was about two weeks for me, everything kind of came to a screeching halt in that industry. And um, so all of a sudden, in, uh, something I've been working six years, days, nights, weekends on, all of a sudden was gone. But having two children, you don't have time to sit around and wonder. You have time to move on. And so I did. And so for three years, we got a corporate job, got very lucky. And a year and a half ago, uh, Damian Cook, who was in the, a mortgage loan officer at Home Bank, uh, he's, uh, our company financed our own projects when I was with G. Smith and Company. And um, we worked with Damian Cook. And uh, the big thing that my product has always been so let the product sell your company. Um, I'm not a great salesman, but if your product can sell the company, then you, in a sense, create um, uncommissioned salespeople to go out and tell people how great of a job you did. Uh, referrals are the best source of business to come in, right? Um, so uh, when Damien came to me a year and a half ago, it was not a great time to get in the mortgage industry. But his company was structured in such a way that uh, it was a correspondent lender, and I knew that if I was going to get into that industry, a correspondent lender was the only way to do it. And so um, I know Damien, he knew me, he knew I wanted to get back into the industry, so I jumped in. Since then, I've become a Zenic certified mortgage lending, mortgage loan bank, mortgage banker. What that means is I've been taught throughout through, through the entire loan process. I'm not just going to sell somebody, put them in my pipeline, and then um, leave them. I'm going to walk them through the entire process and be the mediator between them, the underwriters, and the processors, and it just makes things more simple, uh, easy, uh, and clear. Bob, if you could hit the next slide. So there's a little bit about Assurance Financial. It was started in 2001. It was a two-person family-run brokerage. Um, then they became a correspondent lender. Today they've got offices in Georgia, Alabama, Texas, and now Atlanta. Bob. And um, what is the next slide there? Let's see. Correspondent, correspondent lender. lender. Oh, yeah, correspondent lender. So now I want to tell you, I've been throwing that term around. I've thrown it around a lot. Let me tell you guys what it is, okay? Correspondent lender is a hybrid of a bank and a broker. Bob, if you hit the next slide. So the bank uh, lends its own money, right? So all the decision-making is in-house. Everything's in-house. That's a great thing about a bank, about a small bank, really. Um, the underwriting is all in-house. A small bank, with the underwriting's all in-house, you know, the lender's communicating with the underwriters. Things can get dealt with very quickly. 
And a big, big bank, it's a little bit harder because sometimes the underwriters are in a far off land in an office pushing paper, uh, and it's it's not so much they're not so much emotionally attached to a deal where if something looks a little funny, instead of maybe digging a little deeper and working harder to see if the loan's approvable, uh, they might just say you know just you know they might deny the loan, push it across. Communication becomes very hard at that point. The bad thing about a bank is that uh, they sell their own portfolio, so Wells Fargo only sells Wells Fargo loans, right? Bob, if you hit the next one. So a broker is like an independent sales rep. What a broker does is a broker has maybe between 20 and 40 investors. And so they're going to take your, come, you're going to come in, they're going to take your loan, and they're, uh, they're going to shop it around and find the best rate for you. It's, it's, it's a pretty good system for finding a good rate. The bad thing about a broker is they have no control of the process. So as soon as you sign up with them, they hand you off to this unknown investor. They're typically big companies. Uh, you might be dealing with one person in Minnesota, then somebody else in California, and they have no control of the process. It's a good product for refinance. In my opinion, it's not a good product for a purchase transaction where you've got to get things closed quickly. Bob, if you hit the next one. So correspondent lender, correspondent lender, we take the best of both worlds. We keep all the decision-making in-house. We lend our, our own money. We fund the loan. We have control of the underwriters. I've got two underwriters that underwrite every single one of my loans. If there's a problem, we're going to talk about it and deal with it in a couple hours as opposed to maybe a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Um, we also, what we do is we have prearranged agreements with those same investors that the brokers have. But instead of handing them off during the underwriting process, we're licensed to underwrite in-house. So that what we can do is fund the loan and then sell those loans to those investors on the secondary market several months later. Okay, so that's what a correspondent lender is. That's what Assurance Financial is. Uh, I guess if I don't know how much time I've got, a couple minutes maybe. So, okay, so I'd like to uh, basically, if I can give something to you guys, there's a lot of people in here that sometime in the next 10 years will most likely buy a house. So I'd like to just go over a few things in the mortgage industry that will make you a more attractive borrower, okay? Um, so, Bob, if you hit the next slide. It what? should... Buying your home, putting yourself at the head of the class? Yeah. That's pretty nice. Okay, let's go to the next one. So these are the three things, basically, that when we consider, number one, whether you're loanable, and number two, what kind of rate we're going to give you, these are the three things that we think about. Number one is your down payment, number two is your credit history, and number three is your debt-to-income ratio. And this is all pretty simple stuff, but uh, a couple, I just want to hit some key points. One, a big number on the down payment is 20%. If you can put 20% down, you're not paying mortgage insurance. On a conventional loan, mortgage insurance can run anywhere from $70 to $150 a month or more. On an FHA loan, it goes a lot more than that. So getting that 20% is, is key. Uh, the more down payment you put down, the better rate you're going to get. So if you put 20% down, you're going to get a better rate than if you put 15% down, it's going to get a better rate if you put 10% down. Okay? Um, people always ask me, what's the minimum amount you can put down? FHA allows 3.5%. So you can put as little as 3.5% on an FHA loan. Your rate's not going to be that much affected. You can put about 5% on a, a conventional loan, but your, your rate's going to uh, be affected quite a bit. Um, Bob, if you want to go to the next. Oh, the, other, the last thing on that, where your down payment's coming from, you want to talk to your mortgage lender uh, way ahead of time. Just figure out where it's coming from. Make sure there's no pitfalls or anything that you need to do in the meantime. Uh, sometimes that can trip people up. Uh, so credit score is pretty straightforward. I think we're on that slide. Uh, the higher your credit score, the better your rate's going to be. 620 is really the minimum, but really it's 640 is really the minimum. There are some products out there with 620. Um, there are some folks out there doing, doing less. I, I, I don't know who those folks are. So uh, credit history, you know, get, keep your credit history clean. Next slide. Debt to income ratio. This is a little more complicated than the other two. Debt to income ratio, basically, we take your uh, Loan, all your loans that are out there, your car loans, any other mortgage payments you have, minimum credit card payments, and then your new mortgage payment, and we divide that by your monthly income. We want that to be under 55% for an FHA. We want it to be under 45% for a conventional loan. This is important. This is a big deciding factor, not only if you're loanable, but how much money we can actually lend you. So the lower that the ratio is, the better off you're going to be because we're going to plug that new mortgage payment into it. The higher that mortgage payment is, the higher that debt to income ratio is. There's two ways to lower your debt to income ratio. One, earn more money, right? Get a bigger income. That's what we're all doing here today. The other is to pay down your debt or just simply maybe not have the debt in your own name. 
Um, in California, um, there are, it, it, it's a common uh, law kind of uh, uh, state. So, you know, if a wife is on a loan, all the husband's debt has to be used for that loan as well. But in Georgia, that's not the case. Um, so that is it. That's it. Bob, if you want to do the last one, that, I hope you that, find that information useful. I hope you uh, enjoy the presentation. And um, if anybody has any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them.